Uh, now we have a 15 minute spotlight on the labor management initiative. Um, there's uh, increasing evidence of things that, uh, that I think many of us already intuited, but um, uh, the basic idea is that when uh, teacher unions, teacher associations, federations uh, engage in partnership with management, with the educational system, not only at the district level, but also in schools, within classrooms, within schools. When that happens, students do better, teachers do better, they stay longer, uh, collaboration improves uh, within the school, uh, and uh, usually the effects of uh, union management, uh, union management uh, partnerships has uh, larger effects on uh, students who are historically disenfranchised from, from school. So uh, to talk about the Labor Management Initiative, I want to welcome to the stage uh, to Ed Horowitz. He is the, uh, the, the Executive Director of the Labor Management Initiative. Please join me in welcoming him. Welcoming him. Thanks, Santiago. Um, let's see, there we go. So I'm Ed Honowitz, I'm the uh, Senior Project Director for the California Labor Management Initiative, and uh, we are a project of the CDE Foundation, um, Californians Dedicated to Education, and uh, the um, California Labor Management Initiative is uh, funded by some generous grants from the Stewart and Bechtel Foundation, so we want to acknowledge their support in making this, uh, making this possible. Um, so I wanted to give you a little bit of background on the CD Foundation, how the Labor Management or LMI initiative fits into that, and kind of what we do. Um, the uh, CD Foundation works to convene um, education stakeholders, to communicate and catalyze initiatives and ideas that uh, groups like this come together and promote. Um, we have a number of different projects that we work on. Um, the, mine is the, in that middle column there, California Labor Management Initiative. We also run the California STEAM Symposium, which uh, next uh, month will convene about 3,000 educators. It's the biggest STEAM STEM um, event of the year. That'll be uh, down in Long Beach next month. And then we also have a new, uh, relatively new initiative that I'll give you a little bit of background on, um, which is the Alliance for Continuous Improvement. And uh, the Alliance is working on an exciting new um, program called the California Education Policy GPS. And uh, I think it's something that you'll you know, hear more about and want to hear more about. Um, it's a resource for policymakers. Um, the, uh, Alliance for Continuous Improvement has brought together a variety of stakeholder groups that represent educators, um, parents, students, uh, social justice groups, uh, higher ed and research groups, et cetera, to sort of give feedback and think through some of the issues that have been happening. And when we look at some of the recommendations that they're coming out with, they really align and are based in part on things like the research that you just heard about um, on getting down to facts too. And so those kind of key things are uh, the issue of uh, investing fully and equitably uh, funding education, building capacity to ensure that we've got relevant and rigorous um, curriculum. We heard uh, already about uh, ethnic studies programs. If we're not making things relevant to kids, we are not going to get anywhere in the process. Um, looking at how we advance the whole child, we heard a little discussion earlier about community schools and other initiatives that provide all of the services beyond just uh, academic services, but also looking at a set of things like um, how we pr deal with workforce preparedness, um, increased data, um, and looking at how we um, think about systems of continuous improvement and capacity building. And we look at the Labor Management Initiative as a piece of that um, work and thinking about capacity building. So um, when we think about the, the LMI, and I'll give you a little bit of background, um, the Labor Management Initiative since its inception in 2015 uh, we've engaged about a little over 120 school district labor management teams across the state of California, and uh, probably about 48 or so of those are high engagement, medium engagement districts, which means they keep coming back. They keep finding something useful and powerful in what we're doing. And we think that this notion of labor and management working together is absolutely critical. Um, we have a steering committee in the LMI, which is made up of uh, many of the state associations representing folks that are doing the work in our California public schools. 
from AXA, CSESA, CFT, CSBA, CSEA, CTA, and we're looking for more alphabet soup, by the way. So what's, what's not here, but what we're hoping to get are folks like um, uh, SEIU, Teamsters, and on the management side, groups like CASBO. We want more people that are representing the folks doing the work as a part of how we bring folks together. And when we convene people, we convene them in labor management teams, which looks like, at least initially, the, the superintendent, the union presidents, both certificated and classified, um, which we think is important to focus on ensuring that there's classified staff voice in the process, as well as school board members and uh, folks working in HR, et cetera. So this is about bringing people together to learn and think and share. And unfortunately, it's pretty rare that they all get together and do that. Um, and so providing that venue, I think, is, is really important. So, you know, in general, um, I, I'm guessing if we pulled the room and, you know, got out our, our text to, et cetera. Um, it's, it, it's pretty intuitive that if the adults work well together, it would be good for kids. So I won't ask how many of you don't think that's the case. But we actually have good research now that's showing the impacts of effective collaboration. And we're, show, we're seeing things like building more formal union management partnerships at the district level can help catalyze collaboration at the school level. And it's having you know, both impacts, measurable impacts on student performance, also on um, teacher and staff turnover. And we think this is really powerful in light of what you heard around the teacher shortage and other educator um, staff shortages. Um, one of the things that came out in some of the early research was around how at highly collaborative schools, the kind of staff turnover was the same uh, whether it was a high poverty or a high SES school, um, if there was high levels of collaboration. So that's powerful. That's something that can have a, a significant difference on getting high quality staff with experience um, and just managing the, the churn of, of staff in, in public school district. It's also finding some powerful things, and this is now based on expanded research. It's about 400 schools in six states that are a part of this um, survey information coming out of Rutgers and Cornell and, and these two researchers. Um, but looking at things like psychological safety and, you know, does staff feel like they can actually go to somebody in their, you know, their supervisor and say, I got an idea for changing this or this isn't working well, we need to do something different. Um, so these kinds of things of building collaborative environments are, are powerful and something that we really need to focus on more. Um, so when we convene labor management teams, um, you know, we, we talk about things like trust, right? Very basic stuff around how adults are going to work together. And bringing in large, you know, groups of both at the um, district and, and union leadership level, but also at school sites to have conversations that they're probably not having otherwise. Um, and one of the things that I think is, is important is, you know, we're not just doing this as, you know, let's all get along here. It, it'll feel a lot better than beating each other up from a labor management dynamic. It's about how we think about moving people to look at systems work and how we think about things you, like using the Fullen and Quinn's coherence framework, some of the work from Patrick Dolan around structures that support collaboration, and how we take an expanded view of um, the whole area of um, unions' roles in moving systems work forward. So um, I wanted to show a couple things here. Um, this is uh, the coherence framework in Santiago. I think you're somewhat familiar with this, with uh, Michael Fullen. Um, but this has been a powerful way for people to think about how we build collaborative cultures and systems, how we focus direction, deal with accountability issues, and focus on deep connections to process improvement. The good news is, in California, this is also very aligned to the state system. Um, so things like, um, LCAP, and which hopefully is moving people toward more goal alignment, the dashboard, internal and external accountability, et cetera. Um, so I, I want to talk just briefly about a couple of these pieces. We use a thing that Patrick Dolan, who worked in a number of industries and spent the later half of his career in public education, looking at structures that support collaboration. We often have very few places where labor and management come together and really talk about the work and the we and what's actually happening. Um, and ensuring that 
you know, both the staff doing the work on the ground, their voice comes up into the system to impact decision making. Um, we also work with this three frames of unionism, which has to do with, you know, not just the industrial frame, which is where both labor and management spend most of their time arguing about wages and benefits and fairness issues, et cetera, but also moving uh, unions to look at how do they own the professional frame and the social justice frame of moving the work forward and impacting their day-to-day their -day work in the classroom, in the school district, um, and the social justice work um, within the community. So those three frames are also critical. And I wanna show you just a really quick video here that'll give you a little bit of background and then I'll, I'll move forward because I know we have limited time here. So if we can click on that and run the video. Good morning, everyone. I'm Shelley Mazur. The California Labor Management Initiative is one of our projects, and we are delighted to have you all here this morning. Thank you so much for joining us here in San Diego. I think what we need right now in the educational system are organizations like LMI that are outreaching and bringing people together. Gosh, it is just such a great pleasure to be with you here today. So much great work has gone on in the state of California as we've developed over the last seven years this thing and this effort, this new way of business that we call the California Way. California Labor Management Initiative really stands out as kind of the definition of what that's all about. We're not talking about the things that divide us, we're talking about the ways that we can come together and collaborate. The role of trust is incredibly important and probably underappreciated. Our ability to open ourselves up in deep and meaningful and genuine ways with one another actually is a precursor to trust being formed and developed. The role of trust is being in a secure environment where your opinion, your thoughts, your voice is heard and it's validated. When you listen to people, if you address even the smallest issue for them, it shows that you listen. Acknowledging what you hear is what builds the trust with the entire employee group, and that's where you can really make change. This is a grassroots effort that comes up from all of the insights that you have, what your schools need, what your children need, what your community needs, what your staff needs. We can figure out an alternative and work together. How we are together is really important. It's a really complex set of moves and skills to be able to really collaborate with people. We've really got to be building and nurturing our relationships and that takes a long time. We know that trust is associated with all manner of positive outcomes for kids and for adults. If we know that already, when we start thinking about the outcomes that we want to have together, the quality of our relationship should be one of those important outcomes. We're a partnership. What do we do? And it becoming a we instead of what are you going to do? What am I going to do? It is a team effort. I don't just look at it like I need to engage all of our employees. We need to engage our parents. We need to engage our students. We need to engage our teachers and our classified and administration. It's the culture. It's a collaboration. And it's the structures and systems that we put into place that will remain because it is such a dynamic culture. If you really, in an organization, want to have meaningful change, you have to organize your meetings and your discussions so that you think together. And the only way you get that is when the leader has a history of engaging and dealing with someone as a fellow human being, and that's essentially the basis of trust. I ask you to share the trust, to think about ways to build the trust, to think about the time for action, and that time for action is now. Thank you for being here and have a great summer in too. Well, I know we're, uh, we're short on time and I'm gonna run through just a couple of pieces, but I did wanna touch on something that was really critical that uh, has, has come down from our Supreme Court. Um, and that was, uh, in fact, when you saw um, our group meeting at our Summer Institute in San Diego and uh, actually we were meeting on the day and had a panel on the issue of the Janus decision on the day that it was handed down as a 5-4 vote from the Supreme Court. And um, I think that this, the bottom line is this, unions are here, unions are going to remain here and a powerful, important voice as a part of public education um, as well as other public sector elements. What we know is that there's powerful voices that are sort of pulling apart at the fabric um, around um, moving, um, sort of impacting worker voice, worker rights, et cetera. And for us, the counter narrative to that is actually 
building those systems of trust and listening, um, et cetera, in, in public school districts. I think, you know, at the end of the day, and I'm going to blast through this because we're running out of time and they're trying to yank me off the stage here. Good, lucky for you. Um, <laughs> We work with, with management teams, bringing in schools, district departments, um, connecting them up um, in, in a variety of ways. And what we're really trying to do here is, is you know, boil down is, is this. Management me needs to listen more and manage a little less. And employee unions need to focus more on quality issues and not defer quality to management. That's not just a management issue. That's something that employee unions need to own and drive, as well as the community justice component of all of that. So um, we have upcoming events. I um, would invite you to uh, come to the uh, cdefoundation.org to learn a little bit more as we think about how we make these deep shifts. If we're going to build capacity and change the dynamic and do all the things that you're talking about, it really comes down to something that Pedro Nogueira said at one of our events when he was a speaker for us. And he said, um, you know, we've come to believe that pressure is the only way to improve schools. And, you know, the reality is, he said it, um, the only things that he knows that improve schools are collaborative problem solving and capacity building. And we need to focus more on capacity building in the state of California. That's what we're working with in the California Labor Management Initiative. And that's something that the next SPI has, has a deep impact on and will hopefully continue to move forward. Um, I want to thank you all for the opportunity to be here. And uh, I wanted to bring up uh, uh, Carla and uh, to introduce our next uh, SBI candidate who will be potentially one of two people doing the work. Thank you.